Hello, welcome to Your Community, Your World. My name is Shalala Denika. This program looks at what's happening within your community. It's a new year, it's 2021, and I say Happy New Year to you. This is the time where most people do make New Year's resolution, and that's what we'll be talking about on today's show. I'll start with my guest, Dee Lano. Dee Lano, welcome to the program. I'd say Happy New Year to you. And for viewers, Dee Lano is an author of a book called Get Stuff Done, and also an international motivational speaker. So we're in for a good ride this evening. Welcome to the show. From wherever they're watching all over the world, it's lovely to be here. Thank you. Now, I want to say Happy New Year once again. You know, at this time of the year, traditionally speaking, this is the time where most people tend to do their New Year's resolution. All this New Year's resolution every year, does this really work? Thank you, that's a great question. You see, yes, I would say yes and no. It depends on what resolution you're setting for yourself and how, how high up have you set your resolution? Have you set the bar low or have you set the bar too high? Have you set it that it's so overwhelming you just don't even know where to begin? So people need to try and set, set something that gives you passion something that you want to jump out of bed for every morning. Ask yourself, what do I want to do? What's my desire? What's going to make me happy? That's, a, that's an interesting one. But um, I mean, I know we all use the word New Year's resolution when it comes to January, but is it actually the same as um, setting goals for the year or is it completely different? I love, I'm glad you asked that question, yes. So resolutions and goals, they seem similar and people make them every year. But when you make a resolution, you can just say it out into the atmosphere or you can say it in your head. But at that time, it's just a wish. But if you don't take that resolution and physically write it down, then it remains a wish. But once it's, that's a commitment to yourself. Sometimes when I listen to a few, they tend to be things that I will not do this, I will not do that, and you know, and so on and so forth. But should, should New Year resolutions be realistic? Absolutely, they should be. Like I said before, sometimes these resolutions are so overwhelming that they are unrealistic and that's when they become unachievable and you don't get around to doing them because very soon it's like joining the gym. I'm going to go to the gym every single day for the whole of January and you pay that subscription, you pay the membership, you start going one weekend, you think, oh, you know what, this isn't me. Oh, I'm struggling by the second week. It's like, oh, can I really? Do? Oh, well, no one's looking. No, it, it was my resolution. Oh, I just give up. <laughs> it's, it's, it's between me and my God. <laughs> so I'm giving up now. And it's because you have to set yourself small tasks. You've got to pace yourself and give yourself bite-sized tasks that you can achieve and ultimately succeed in. I like that word bite-sized task. Yes, I think that perhaps will make it more realistic. But then again, you know, many people do set goals, you know, or resolutions, New Year resolutions. And, you know, just before the end of January, it all fizzles out. Now, what, what should they do? People who find themselves in that situation, what should they do? Thank you. That's another good question. You see, the reason why a lot of people don't get around to doing whatever they set themselves doing is because they start procrastinating. And if you want to find solutions to procrastination, you have to look at the reason behind why aren't I achieving my goal? Maybe you set a goal last year and you look at Why didn't I? What was stopping me? What were the barriers? Why, why couldn't I achieve what I set myself out to do? And some of the reasons why, there are many reasons why people do not achieve their goals, but there are three very severe reasons, prominent reasons why people don't achieve their goals. And they're called three fears. Fear that, fear, there are many different fears, but I'm gonna just touch on three particular ones. 
The first one is fear of not achieving your goal or fear of failure. You fear what people are going to say about you. You're scared that if I don't achieve it, I've, I've told people I'm going to do this now. They're all expecting something amazing, something fantastic, and I'm not sure that I'm going to be able to deliver. So you have that fear in you that, oh, you're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be made fun of. Yeah, people are going to remember you as the person that failed woefully forever. So we have to try and, and, and think don't, don't let other people's thoughts or what you think they're thinking about you because they may not even be thinking about you. We've, we've all had so much to think about in this past year. Everyone's getting on with their life. Nobody is sitting in their home thinking, oh, I, oh, look at that one, pointing fingers. Oh, well, uh, she tried, she did, she did. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't, people are going to talk. So let's give them something fantastic to talk about us. That's the first fear. That was the fear of failure. So the, the second fear is fear of rejection. Okay. We fear it, it, so it kind of falls in line with fear of failure. But fear of rejection is like, what if I approach people with what I'm doing? What if they see what I'm doing and they, they reject it outright and, and I'm just left out in the cold? You know, we don't, we don't want to be that person that seems like we're the pariah of the society. We all want to be accepted. We want to be loved. We want to be praised. It doesn't hurt us to hear a little, oh, at a boy, at a girl, well done, you did great. But when people are rejecting you, that's not a good feeling. That's not a nice feeling. So then people think, well, uh, I'm just not going to get bothered then. I'm not going to get started because I don't want people to reject me. And the third fear, third fear, and it's one of the, uh, I think it's the one that really gets people the most, is the fear of the past. Wow. When you think about where you're coming from, what happened to you last year, 10 years ago, at the beginning of your life, you just feel that that's going to define you for the rest of your life. But no, no, we've got to leave the past in the past. As bad as it was, 2020 is done. It was a bad year for, for I think, everybody. Mm -hmm. But we have to leave 2020 where it is. That's true. And now we're in, tw we're in 2021. And mm -hmm. we've been given a chance to reinvent ourselves and to start again. So that's what we do with these New Year resolutions. We try to reinvent. We try to reinforce that promise we made to ourselves 12 months ago. We try and get it done. With all of these things, I actually explain them very well in my book, Get Stuff Done. You can find it on Amazon. <laughs> get Stuff Done, Productivity Hacks, so that you can do the things that you love and have more time to do them. So when you have set yourself, like I said, the many bite-sized tasks, you find it easier to get them done. And then you have much more time to do all the things that you love. So what, what would you say to those who say, hmm, I don't believe in New Year's resolution? Well, again, New Year resolution, it's a personal thing, isn't it? It's not a, it's not a, a law. <laughs> It, it, there's no law that says on the 31st of December, everyone around the world must make a resolution. No, it's a personal choice. It's up to you. Uh, it's just, a, again, it's a good way of starting a new year. When we are coming to the 31st of December, we're ending not just the end of the month, we're ending the end of a, a year, a long year, like last year, a year we'd like to forget. Um, also, sometimes... <laughs> Sometimes the 31st of December, uh, well, we were all quite fortunate, um, like uh, 20 years ago, to also end the millennium. Sure. So you, you're coming into a new beginning, a fresh start. You, do, you don't want to bring all the old baggage with you from the last year into the new year. So you want to leave that behind at the door and you want to start again. You want to give yourself that something to look forward to and something to be proud of that even if you get to the 31st of January and you can tick off a few things that you've done you say yeah pat yourself on the back well done I did that and you feel good it's a feel good factor so why not but again like I said it's between you yourself and your God 
there's no re New Year resolution police coming to knock on the door <laughs> to ask you, <laughs> did, did you achieve, <laughs> have you done your goals? If not, <laughs> you're off to jail. No, it's not like that. But it's good fun. It's something good to look forward to and something to do for yourself. That's true. And that's, that's um, understandable. Now, let's, let's go to your book, Get Stuff Done. Tell us a little bit about your book. Thank you. Well, Get Stuff Done was born out of the desire for myself even to get things done that I had put off for years maybe. I got a book together in different places on different pieces of paper, but I hadn't just got it together and taken it out to get published. And I believe that mm -hmm. all the lessons and stories that I had within this book could help other people to actually get their lives better that if they can see my life as a role model, they could get stuff done too. If I could do it, so could you. I am the, uh, the co, uh, I am the CEO of Women's, Sweet Women's Net Business Network. And it was part of the reason that I wanted to help other women to achieve their talents, to discover their gifts, and also bring them together, collaborate, work together and bless other people with their goals. And I also, uh, I fall foul of that. I need to bring my talents to the fore and also bless others. And I believe that I could do that through writing this book, Get Stuff Done. Interesting, you use... Hacks. Yes. I, I was just going to talk about productivity hacks. Um, it's interesting you use, um, you, you put those two words together. <laughs> Just tell us a little bit about what you mean by productivity hacks. Well, within the book, you will discover why productivity is one of the most important skills that a human being can have. When we're tackling tasks, when we're doing our daily chores, when we're doing anything in life, to come into the world and be productive. So it would be a crime if we had all this talent and all this skill and we never discovered it, we never found our why or reason and we never blessed others with it. When you actually discover your why, you, it is your mandate also to share it with other people. When you share, then you bless them. You are blessed through the way you bless others. So it was within my heart to start Sweet, Sweet Women's Business Network, so to help other women also to discover their talents. And I felt that also when it's written down, I can put it in a book and they can actually read it, use it and get blessed by it. And also I've developed a course from it. So you can go online and you can get the course, Get Stuff Done Productivity Hacks course on Udemy. Okay, that's um, it's actually interesting that you put, you put the course together. That's, um, that's quite commendable. Now, I've read quite a reviews about your books and they were actually excellent, excellent reviews. Who... Your book, who was it aimed at? My book is aimed at women, entrepreneurs at first. But I will say, I do love men too. So any man that wants to read my book, <laughs> I'm not anti-men, but coming being a woman myself, I felt that women would be able to relate to me and my, my condition and situation. I'm a, a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a serial entrepreneur. There isn't a, a, a job that I haven't tried, but I am so pleased to say I have found the one that works for me, and that is teaching productivity and coaching and just helping and assisting any woman out there that wants to start a business or is in a business, wants to change career. And now we find a lot of women and moms, especially are at home, because of lockdown in the UK, we're now in uh, tier four. Yeah. If it hasn't gone up to tier five, because every day it's changing. <laughs> and it's, um, we hope it will start, the situation will start to get better. But for now, there are a lot of moms at home who are juggling, uh, being a professional, getting the house done, being a wife, and also educating their children at the same time. And my I have tips and hacks to show you how to organize and manage and prioritize and be able to juggle everything so that it seems seemly and it doesn't become overwhelming. And I'm aiming at digital moms, entrepreneurs, professionals, all, all these women that I can relate to and hope can relate to me. 
Okay, for all the moms out there who have listened to you, and perhaps the, the men as well, so where, where can they get your books? Again, you can find Get Stuff Done Productivity Hacks on Amazon.co.uk stuff done on Udemy. All these links I will forward to you so that they can be put into the comments. Okay, so that's, that's, um, that's nice and that's wonderful. You've told us about the New Year's resolution that yes, it's personal, people can, people can do it if they want. You've said it has to be realistic. You've told us about the three fears and what do you, what do you just want to round up with um, regarding the New Year's resolution? Just something for someone to take away about the New Year's resolution to make sure that it is realistic and that they can really, it's something they can achieve. Thank you, yes. Well, what my takeaway for you today would be that to set yourself a goal, write it down and put it on the wall where you can see it. So you remind yourself daily that this is my goal. This is what I've set myself to do and give yourself timely reasonable timelines like daily weekly and make sure that you can achieve these goals and you don't feel overwhelmed but also seek support seek advice use courses like my course online or read the book where you can get tips and hacks that can help you to achieve your goals remember you're not alone we are together in this and when you have a vision just remember that god and the universe will not give you a vision without supplying the provision. So hopefully this message will be greatly received and I look forward to hearing and speaking with you very soon. Have a great, great, great day. Well, thank you so much for all that. And um, of course, we can't end this interview without bringing COVID-19 even into 2021. What's your, what's your word for our viewers out there in terms of, being, in terms of staying safe? Well, as you know, uh, I can only speak for the UK where I live right now. Uh, again, like I mentioned, we're, we're in tier four because unfortunately this disease is on the increase. It's not going down. And so maybe this time around in tier four, we should just try our best. I know, I know most people are adhering to the, to the restrictions. So, keeping their hands clean, wearing masks, social distancing, and especially wearing masks outside when we go into public places like supermarkets and on public transport. Let's just get it right this time because we don't want this to go on forever. We want it to come to an end. So let's stay safe, let's do the right thing and let's stay healthy. Thank you. Yes, so Dilana, thanks a lot for your time and for your words of wisdom. We wish you the best in all the several pies your hands are in <laughs> thank you so much god bless thank you thank you hi everyone my name is Cairo, and i became an entrepreneur in the first lockdown i am 11 years old and i'm loving it please watch out for my story on your community your world on ben tv I'm sure you'll agree with me that it's always good to set goals that are realistic and achievable. I'll go on a quick commercial break. I wash my hands to protect my family. I wear a face covering to protect my mates. I make space to protect my nan. Hands. Face. Space. I wash my hands to protect my colleagues. I wear a face covering to protect strangers. I make space to protect you. Hands. Space. Space. As we spend more time indoors, we need to do whatever we can to help protect each other. So please, wash hands, cover face, make space. Would you like to have your weddings, parties or celebrations featured on television? Events is the programme for you. Every Sunday at 5pm, we feature weddings, parties and all other functions. To find out more, call us on 07944 039-887. We can also arrange coverage of the function for you. For sponsorship, adverts and to feature your celebrations on this show, call now on 07944 039 or 07985-638-661 or send an email to 
info at eventsforus.com Events oh yeah. in UK, Europe and all over the world. Events oh yeah, so. Welcome back. Many countries are no doubt facing the second or even third wave of coronavirus. Well, many industries have had to adapt to the way they work. Let's look at the hotel industry. My name is Kevin. I'm the operation manager of Aro and SCT Hotel. Aro and SCT Hotel is situated at number two, Majakudomi Street, off Alem. Just about five minutes drive, five minutes drive from the international airport. We have about we have 54 rooms here at the, at this main location. We have the annex just a street away from here. There we have 31 rooms also. The, the, in the main in the main building we have a banquet hall that can sit. I have a seating capacity of 300. We have two conference meet. Then the pool side is a good side, it's a good side for realization. We have a bush bar also there located at the pool side also. Then we have the rooms are well, fit, well furnished fit, fitted rooms, 54 rooms, as I said. Beside that, we have the apartment, various apartment. We have a single apartment, double suit apartment, which is comfortable for family for, and for leisure for transport. If in case you are on transit and you are your family, you, you are stuck up or in case of anything, you can always come and lodge around, you can stay around our apartment, which can uh, uh, take care of your family needs. The single apartment is a living room and a, and a, and a, and a, and a bedroom. But in the kitchen aspect, we have your home, we have your kitchen, you have your gas, everything that is everything that is needed in a, in a home, the hall in the apartment. That's why I said before that we target home away from home. The COVID really um, already affected our mode of um, operation in this hotel uh, industry. You say, as you can see that um, every guest or even staff are coming to the hotel, we, we are subjected to washing of hands right at the entrance of the gate. And even if you look at our gates, there is a banner there. We paste the banner that no face masks, no entry. That is part of the modality that we've also put in place to checkmate um, um, the, COVID, the spread of uh, the COVID. Then I, uh, our operation generally uh, in the hotel has really changed. We subject our, our staff to weekly and monthly trainings, mostly those ones that are in the food handlers uh, sector. Beside that, even though, uh, our front office desk also, we have asked them to always put on the face shade when they are, when they are, when they are attending to our guests. Then every guest is expected to also use the hand sanitizer which we place at the front of the, the desk, beside washing their hands at the gate and at the entrance of the hotel. Um, in all the various departments, like the bar and the restaurants, even the kitchen, we, we've done, the, uh, we also we put them into regular training. We have um, uh, health officials that normally comes to put them, to give them a uh, training on the use of uh, all these uh, hand sanitizers and uh, the measures that we are put in place in the operation. That was why I said earlier that uh, this COVID of 18 are really of affected our operation. There's not, it's not as usual. Like someone we just walk in, order for food and take, like our buffet session now, we've restricted it because of this uh, COVID-19 uh, issue. But one good thing about this hotel is that we've really put every measure in place to make sure that uh, we check the activities of uh, the COVID and put everything in control. We have the sanitizer, we have the face masks, and all the staff is compulsory that every staff will put on the face mask. It's because I'm um, interviewing, you have seen me on my own face mask, I have my own face mask, and the front desk, they have their face sheet to, for them to uh, attend to guests. Okay, like I said before, you see, our and is situated in the heart of a Keja, Allen. As I said, uh, to be precise, the uh, number two, Majiko Domi, uh, just five minutes drive from the local airport and uh, ten minutes drive from the international airport. Our uh, terms of uh, pricing, our um, rates are affordable, and we have categories of a uh, room. We have the classic, we have the standard, we have the executive, we have the suit, and the apartment for families. So I will advise that anytime you are coming along to Lagos. RIA is the best place for you to lodge. We have all the facilities to make to accommodate you. But beside that, if you're having a fortune, no matter the numbers of people, we have our harness also to complement 
to complement the numbers. The, at the Annex, as I said, we have 31 rooms there. The, at the main hotel, at the main location, we have uh, 54 rooms adding up together. So if any fortune that money comes, we are able to handle it because of the numbers of uh, rooms we have on grant. As I always said, anytime you are in Lagos, find your way to RNC City Hotel. Number two, Majoko Major Domain Street, off Allen. The landmark is just by our shopping plaza. In case you are along that island, you're driving him, the landmark, the only use the or shopping plaza opposite the Echo Bank. If at the bottom, anytime you, uh, even from the Google, from, from, from the Google map, just click on our shopping plaza, you find your way straight to RICT Hotel. We have the hall, we have the hall that can see 350 city capacity banquet. If you have your marriages, seminar, end of year party, annual conference, our, our hall, it's the best place for you to hold such an uh, event. The city capacity is the best. The, uh, we, beside that, we have two uh, standby generators in case of any power failure. We have all the facilities to handle your, your guests. Our city hotel, as I said earlier on, is situated at number two, Mwajoko Domain Street of Alem. We have the Annex also at number nine, Motayo Ojo Street. St. Allen, just a street away from the main uh, hotel. As I said before, Aranhe Hotel is one of the best hotel offering hospitality in, to every person. As I said, Aranhe Hotel is a home away from home. It's the place that you must visit. Anytime you are in Lagos, try and visit Aranhe City Hotel. It's the place that when you come, you will always make reference to it and you will refer us to your friends. Aranhe Hotel is a home away from home. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Cairo and I became an entrepreneur in the first lockdown. I am 11 years old and I'm loving it. Please watch out for my story on Your Community, Your World on Ben TV. We've come to the end of this program. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Shola Lajenika. Please do remember that this program is shown every Sunday, 6 p.m. on Ben Television. You can always re-watch the program on our YouTube channel, Your Community, Your World. Please don't forget it's our responsibility to halt the spread of this virus. And we can do that by simply washing our hands, remembering to put on our face coverings, and respecting social distancing. I'll see you same time next There's week. There's a new virus Goodbye. in town Going from place to place it's called the COVID-19 Spreading its wings around the world It's a must for us to keep good hygiene By washing our hands, keeping our shoes Keeping our hand, the room clean oh.